woman that's unconscious. He's on the front porch. I don't know if son's been to her. The woman on the floor is Matthew's mother, Kimberly. She's not breathing because her son just attacked her. What happened to her to make her fall unconscious? I don't know. I was sleeping. I woke up and her son was trying to attack me with a knife. Matthew used a machete against his mother's boyfriend, whose voice you hear, then tried to take his own life. I need you to get right next to her and tell me if she's breathing. I don't think she is. Kimberly Lander would later die. Her boyfriend sustained minor injuries, and Matthew was arrested and charged with his mother's murder. Only a few hours before it all happened, Matthew was released from a 13-day stay here at McLaren Hospital in Port Huron after hospital staff decided he was safe to be discharged. They had said he had three people fighting for control of his mind. Michael Lander helped convince his brother to be admitted to the hospital. What he could do at this point, but learn from it, correct it if possible, stop it happening in the future. No one should have to feel what I feel on a daily basis. A mother is dead, her son is facing life in prison, and it could have all been prevented, say family members, had Michigan's mental health system simply done its job. Assalamualaikum and hi to all of you. My name is Muhammad Azafais and I work with Empty Health Company. The video you just watched, it's about someone who is having a mental health issue. So today, my colleague and I are going to discuss about mental health. Our emotional, psychological and social well-being is part of our mental health. It has an impact on the way we think, feel and act. A person's mental health can be affected by biological factors such as genes or brain chemistry. Other than that, it can happen as a result of someone's life experience particularly if that person has been abused or has been in a traumatic situation. According to the statistic, mental problems impact over 400 million people worldwide, while one in a three nation suffers from the mental health concern, with the highest frequency among those aged 16 to 19, and especially those from the low-income families. Extremely high and low blood pressure change in appetite, low energy, loss of joy and obsessive anxiety are five early indications of a mental health problem. Anxiety, depression, bipolar illness, post-traumatic stress and paranoia are the five major mental health issues. Today, my team and I will focus on paranoia, namely what it is, why it exists and how to overcome it. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. I am Hafsi. I got a question about what is a paranoid personality disorder or known as PPD. Okay, I will explain about it. PPD is the same group as a schizotypal and schizoid personality disorder. In the Diagnostic of Statistical Manual, DSM, this grouping is called Cluster A. There are three clusters of personality disorder in DSM. The first is cluster A, secondly is cluster B, and thirdly is cluster C. Uh, paranoid disorder is in cluster A. This disorder characterized by a pervasive and pattern suspiciousness and distrust of others. This disorder often time individual will see others people as a trying to exploit them harm them and deceive them and they will doubt the loyalty of close friend and distant friend relative friend and associate pretty much everyone around them they have any type of meaningful contact with so somebody approaches them appear to be a loyal that will really find that be startling and unusual and become more suspicious individual with this disorder oftentimes are reluctant to confide in people about their feeling of vulnerability about their thought of hostility toward others this feeling 
they are being threatened by others. They don't like to talk about that. They also see hidden demeaning aspect of threatening, aspect in incautious, innocuous remark and comment. And this can be just a brief comment that people make like a greeting or saying goodbye. For an example, if someone with this disorder is at a restaurant and the waiter or waitress bring the wrong meal instead just instead just being honest mistake in that person mind could turn into the well person brought me the wrong meal because they are conspiring against me so it is reading way more than the evidence would suggest so everybody has a paranoia in a way just like narcissism it is normal to have a paranoid feeling once in a while but this symptom that we see in the paranoid personality disorder are well beyond what the evidence support another piece with a paranoid personality disorder is the idea of holding grudge so once someone with this disorder form distrust or has the suspiciousness often time a grudge follow and this is a lack of forgiveness even though nothing was actually done in the individual mind would be necessary to move on they can forgive and they can forgive they hold the grudge and sometimes they are acting on the overtime and this is about paranoia before I ended this, if you all notice that your family, member, friend or relative had this disorder, help them by bringing them to the doctor or counseling center and try to help them sincerely and never make them stress. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone my name is Hudan Shadwan bin Johari okay now I want to tell you between the type of prana symptom the first symptom of prana is trust of other firstly people who are prana will be dubbed in the commitment loyalty or trust of other trusting other to use or this is them for example are related to confide in other or reveal personal information because they are afraid the information will be used against them they usually have a an attitude of unforgiving and hold grudges the second symptom of paranoia is possessive attack on their other character. Secondly, people who are paranoid will get possessive attack on their character that are not apparent to others. Most of them generally reach wish anger and are quick to retaliate. Other than that, they feel percentage suspension without reason then their are then their friend or lover are being unfaithful. The third symptom of parana is difficult relaxing. More people that are paranoid will have difficult relaxing because they are overthinking about bad things that happen to them because of that they will not get enough rest and their mind will get pressure the fourth symptom of paranoid is felt persecuted by the world 
last but not least people who had the symptom of paranoid will have felt persecuted by the world at large it is not good for themselves because they will feel that they are unuseless to life in this world and can make a wrong decision for their life such as suicide Hey man, want some gum? Nice try, Herbert. I'm not gonna let you poison me. The heck, man. Dude, that's my favorite gum. <laughs> Hello and Assalamualaikum. I am Muhammad Sayyid Iskandar. Today I would like to brief you more precisely about the cause of paranoia. The first cause is lack of sleep. For your information, lack of sleep can trigger feeling of insecurity and even unsettling feeling and hallucination. Fears and worries may develop late at night. Next, someone who has phobia life experience. You are more likely to experience paranoid talk when you are in a vulnerable, isolated or stressful situation that could lead to your feeling negative about yourself. If you are bullied at work or your home is bugged, this could give you suspicious talk which could develop into paranoia. And then, the way you think is one of a cause paranoia. If you tend to come to conclusion quickly, believe things, very strongly and don't easily change your mind. Lastly, usage of drug can also cause paranoia. The use of methamphetamine can cause paranoia behavior and delusion. Other drug that can lead to paranoia talk process include PCP and LCD. The paranoid may also be at greater than average risk of experiencing major depressive disorder, agoraphobia, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, or alcohol and substance related disorder. Because of reduced level of trust, they can be challenged in treating PPD. However, psychotherapy, antidepressant and anti-anxiety medication can play a role for this disorder. Don't believe everything you think. Thoughts are just that thought. Remember, sometimes the best thing you can do is not to think, not wonder, and not imagine. Just brave and have faith. As a conclusion, we must avoid from doing any gesture and feeling that lead to having a paranoia. So I hope people who are having paranoia is not covered. Last but not least, my team member will talk about how to overcome it. So, let's go. Assalamualaikum and hello to everyone. I'm Daniel. So now I will tell about how to stop and overcome the paranoia. Paranoia, a mental condition characterized by delusion of persecution. Unwarranted jealousy, is a great self important typically elaborate into an organic system it may be an aspect of chronic personality disorder of drug abuse or of a serious condition known as schizophrenia in which the person lose touch with reality see the Oxford dictionary in case of this definition of paranoid medical attention should be immediately sought However, the term paranoid is also often informally used a tough to describe a tough process heavily influenced by anxiety or fear. If you know someone who is dealing with paranoid, you understand the constant worry that comes with it. While there are different paranoid types, it brings a high level of anxiety and fear that something may happen. 
Paranoid may also include constant worries about what people think about you. Experiencing paranoid may pose challenging effect on your overall health. It may raise concern about your safety, increase feeling of sadness, worry, and lead to isolation. Since the paranoid can have many effects, it is essential to research to learn more about how it affects different people understanding why a person ap- experience paranoid may depend on risk factor and personal experience that have create uncomfortable feelings. Paranoid may affect how one thinks and feels about an experience or a situation. Some form of paranoid may come from a traumatic experience, but others may not know the cause. Understanding how to stop paranoid depends on how it affects your life. Some form of paranoid require medical attention, such as working with a therapist or counselor. Other types can be managed through self-help technique, although some use a combination of techniques to improve their result. There are many options to help deal with paranoid. So here are four ways to help you get started. One, learn what trigger through behind your paranoid and challenge them. Ask yourself question when you feel suspicious, suspicious about a potential trigger. Look for evidence to justify your paranoid thought. Two, practice meditation and mindfulness technique. This can help you learn how to mentally and physically calm yourself. You can also practice visualization by using your imagination to create positive image in your mind. Three, talk about your thoughts with a mental health counselor or therapist. A form of therapy such as con- cognitive behavioral therapy (CBT) has helped people understand tough pattern associated with paranoia. Four, establish a support system. Talk to people you trust about feelings. Maintain your relationship with people you care about. Try a peer support group to connect with other coping with paranoid. Helping yourself deal with paranoid does not have to be difficult, and you don't have to do it yourself. Learning how to work through feeling puts you in better control so you can live more. Thank you for watch our video about mental health groups and we hope that you all got some knowledge about paranoid disorder.